Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael. You guys are watching IDB. And in this video, I wanna share with you some things that I recommend doing if you just got a brand new iPhone. So I'm gonna break this video into three parts. The first one is new features for the iPhone 15 series, because if you just got a brand new iPhone, there is a pretty good chance it is an iPhone 15 or an iPhone 15 Pro. The second part of this video is going to be some customization features I recommend changing on your new iPhone. And the final part is just gonna be a few common device settings that I always recommend people change on their new iPhone. So let's go ahead, roll the intro and jump right in. All right, so first up for the iPhone 15 is a really cool new feature that allows you to activate portrait mode even if you didn't take a photo in portrait mode. So inside the camera application, the only way before the iPhone 15 that you could get a portrait mode photo is if you went into portrait mode like this. But now on the iPhone 15 series, if your device detects a person or even a cat or a dog, you can now activate portrait mode after the fact. So here is a selfie I took. Now you're gonna notice that we are able to turn this photo into portrait mode based on this tiny little icon on the top left corner. You can see the icon looks like an F. And if I tap this and then choose portrait, you can see after it loads for a bit, it's then gonna turn this photo into a portrait mode photo. This is really awesome because the number one issue I always have when I take a photo is I just wanna take the photo quickly. I don't wanna to have to go into portrait mode and finagle with all of the settings. So this is fantastic. I can finally just snap my photo and then worry about portrait mode after the fact. You can also get some of the portrait lighting as well. So if you go into edit your photo and then tap this icon on the top left, you're then able to change some of the portrait lighting on your face as well. So it's really cool that all of the depth information and the light information from the shot is going to be stored in the metadata of the photo, even if you don't want to apply the portrait effect right away. So this is a really cool new feature on the iPhone 15 series. And next up for the iPhone 15 series is using the dynamic island. So the island is not new for the Pro series of iPhones, but it is new for the base model iPhone 15. The iPhone 15 is the first base model iPhone to get rid of the notch, and we now have an island. And the island is so much better than a notch because the notch was pretty much useless and didn't do anything. But here, the island can keep track of your system alerts and ongoing activities, and it's pretty much a secondary task switcher, in my opinion, that allows you to see various things going on on your iPhone when when you're doing something else. So if I open up music, for example, and start playing a song, if I then go home, you can see the song is now in my island. If I tap on the island, it's gonna jump me to the corresponding application, and I can also press and hold on it and see a bunch of controls. I'm gonna close out of music so I can show you the next example. I'll go into the clock application if I can find it here. And then if you start a timer, you can see the timer is also gonna be in the island just like this. Once again, just as we had with music, you can click on it to go into the application. You can also press and hold on it to see a bunch of other controls. So you're gonna notice this behavior throughout the entire system, and this is just for the stock applications. However, the island gets way more useful when you start incorporating third-party applications. So for example, I like to use Uber Eats quite a bit, and whenever my food is on the way, it's gonna show up in the island, and it's gonna show exactly how much time until my food arrives, which is very, very useful. And another application I love using because I am a huge sports fan is called Sports Alerts. If I open up this application, I'm gonna choose uh, this random football game. Then I'll click the menu on the top right and I can click on start live activity. Now when I swipe home, I'm always able to keep tabs on this game in my island. I love doing this on a night where there are two hockey games I wanna follow. I can be watching one on TV and have the other one in the island as well. And also anything that shows up in your island as a live activity is also gonna show up on the lock screen as well. And the final thing I wanna show you if you just got a brand new iPhone 15 is the USB-C port. More specifically is you can now charge other devices. So this is a first for iPhone users. Yes, I know people that have Android phones are gonna go off in the comments. They've had this for years. However, this is a first for the iPhone. So here I have an Apple Watch plug. If I plug this into my iPhone 15, I'm gonna take the other end right here and I'm able to charge my AirPods, for example. So as you can see here, I can magnetically attach the cable to the back of my AirPods case and it is now charging my headphones. 
Obviously this will work with the Apple Watch as well. And if you have another cable that's USB-C to USB-C, you can charge another iPhone 15. And if you have a USB-C to lightning cable, you can charge another iPhone or another iPad. Pretty much the possibilities are endless with this USB-C port. And it also works with external SSDs as well. So now having a USB-C port on the iPhone 15 is a game changer for the iPhone. All right, so moving on from just the iPhone 15 stuff, I now wanna talk about customizing your iPhone. And probably the first thing you think about when you're customizing your iPhone is changing the wallpaper. You probably don't wanna be stuck with the basic default wallpaper that comes out of the box on your new iPhone. So I have two really great applications I always recommend people download if they just got a new phone and they wanna make it look a bit better. The first one is called Vellum, V-E-L-L-U-M. This is a really great wallpaper application. I'll open it up right here. You can see the UI is pretty simple. We have a daily wallpaper. This changes every day, obviously. I think it's every weekday. You also have a daily archive. I believe you do have to pay for the premium version of this application to access this archive. You also have a few other collections. I'll show you just a few. So this one is flannel. Looks like this one is gonna be good for uh, Christmas or I guess the fall season that just passed. We also have this one, which looks like it's customized for the iPhone 15 series. Uh, this looks a little bit boring to me. And then I believe there was a pack down here I really liked. Yeah, this one, Viscosity. This one is really, really cool. So you can download Vellum and look through all of these wallpaper packs and they are adding new packs every single month. So this is a really great application if you wanna change up the wallpaper on your phone. And the second application I use for wallpapers is called Backdrops. So Backdrops, I actually use a little bit more than Vellum just because I like the look of these wallpapers instead. We have a pretty similar UI with a few tabs on the top. So here on the community tab, these are images that have been uploaded by users of the application. We also have images that are uploaded from the developer, as you can see here, and they're always really high resolution and really look good on the OLED display on your iPhone. We also have a uh, collections tab. I believe you have to pay for the premium version of this application to access this section. And then you also have some of your favorites as well. So on a wallpaper, uh, if you find it, you like it, you can hit the heart icon and they'll live inside of your favorites. So this is probably my most used uh, application for wallpapers. And I do believe that, uh, I'll show you right now, this wallpaper on my iPhone was from Backdrops as well. So I love Backdrops. It can really make your iPhone look a lot better. Alrighty, so next up for customization is using widgets on your iPhone. So you may not know it, but this page on my iPhone is actually completely made of widgets. If I go into my edit mode, you can see I simply have three Siri suggestions widgets, which is fantastic because the applications I use are usually changing on a week to week basis. And having these Siri suggested applications is always a lot better than having a static set of applications. So I'd also recommend using a bunch of other widgets which can really improve the way that you use your iPhone. What's really cool is in iOS 17, the latest software update for these new iPhones, is that you can now have interactive widgets. So take for example, the music widget. If I add this to my home screen, I'm actually able to click on the play icon and I can play music right from my home screen without opening up music. So when you're in your edit mode for your home screen, if you click on the plus icon in the top left, all of your available widgets are gonna show up in here. And if you scroll to the bottom, it's gonna be in alphabetical order. It's gonna show all of the built-in apps and the third-party applications that you can add widgets for on your home screen. So there are a few new ones in the iOS 17.2 update. I think there is a new one for clock. So I'll add this one here. And then weather has some new widgets as well. So I'll add this one. And what's really cool is you can pick up a widget and you can stack them just like this. So the system is actually gonna change between these widgets for you based on what it thinks you're gonna need at the time. So when you go to this page at various points in the day, at some point it might show weather and at some times it may show the clock. And one more really cool thing I wanna show you for widgets on the iPhone is called the Smart Stack. So at the very top of your list, if you choose Smart Stack right here, you can add this to your home screen. And this is going to be an always updating stack of widgets. And the system is going to show what it believes is the most relevant widget for you. So here in my Smart Stack, I have contacts, I got photos, I got notes, clock, and a bunch more. And like I said, this is always going to be changing. So the widget is never going to be static in place. 
Next up for customization is a pretty simple one, but for some reason, everyone leaves the sounds and haptics at the default setting on their iPhone, no matter how long they've had their iPhone. So I always recommend people to change their default ringtone and their default texting tone. So this lives inside of settings if you click on sounds and haptics. So the default iPhone ringtone sounds like this. You're probably familiar with it. So I'd recommend changing it to something a little bit different just so you recognize when your phone is ringing. So I'll choose this one, for example. No, I don't really like that one. So let's change it to uh, Milky Way. There, I really like that one. So we'll choose that for the ringtone and then the texting tone. By the way, you can let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but this sound is the most annoying sound ever. Whenever I hear someone get a text message and that really annoying ding goes off, it triggers me in the weirdest way. So I do not like that sound. I always change my texting tone. So I think I'm gonna change it to handoff. Yeah, that's a way better tone when you get a text message. So I'd recommend you browse through all of the sounds in here and choose some better sounds rather than the default ones. Also inside of this settings page, you can choose a few different options for haptics. And one of them is keyboard feedback. This is one of the best changes Apple has made to iOS in a while. I believe they added this in iOS 16, but you can turn on haptics for the keyboard. So when you're typing on the keyboard, you can get a really nice haptic vibration feedback and it feels a lot better. So if you don't have this turned on on your iPhone now, go and turn it on, type something and let me know in the comments how much better it feels. And the final thing I wanna show you for customization on your new iPhone is changing your contact poster. This is an all new feature in iOS 17 and it allows you to change what other people see on their iPhone when you call them. So inside the contacts application, if you choose your own contact and then click on contact poster, you're able to edit what other people are going to see when you call their iPhone. So here is my uh, photo. If I wanna choose my contact poster, I can click on edit and I can scroll through a few that I've made already. I can also click on add a new one right here. So I'm gonna choose a Memoji for this one. And it looks like this is what I have set up. So I'll choose this one right here. I'll click on next. I'm gonna change the background color to something like this, a bit more colorful and eh, maybe orange like that. And I also wanna change my font. So I'm gonna choose this rounded font and make it a bit thicker. And that looks good. So whenever I call someone now on their phone, this is what's gonna show up. This is a lot better than having no contact photo or just a boring basic uh, initials on the other person's phone. So these little customization things are pretty fun and it's one of those iPhone only features where only Apple could do it this well. So it's pretty fun. I'd recommend setting up your contact poster and you can have fun with some of your friends and family when you change these. All right, so we've talked about the iPhone 15 stuff, we've talked about customization. Now I wanna talk about some of the basic settings that I always recommend people change on a new iPhone. The first one is inside of battery settings. So scroll down, click on battery, then click on battery health and charging, then click on charging optimization, and then make sure optimized battery charging is turned on. What this is gonna do is your iPhone is going to learn when you usually start using your iPhone at the start of the day, and it's gonna halt charging until it believes you're gonna need your iPhone. So for example, if I wake up at 3 a.m. in the middle of the night, my iPhone is not going to be at 100%, even though it's been on the charger all night. Instead, it's going to be at 80%, and my iPhone is going to wait until about an hour or half an hour before it believes I'm going to use my iPhone. That's because it is not healthy for your iPhone's battery to sit at 100% for too long. So if you have optimized battery charging turned on, it's gonna be a lot better for the longevity of your iPhone's battery. And the next feature I always recommend people turn on on their new iPhone is called Backtap. Backtap allows you to do certain things on your iPhone simply by double tapping or triple tapping the back of your iPhone. So it lives inside of accessibility settings. So click on accessibility, then click on touch then scroll all the way down and click on back tap. From here, you can either choose a double tap or a triple tap, or of course you can choose both. So as you saw at the start there, I have a double tap set up for my flashlight. So this is really useful at nighttime. If I just double tap the back of my iPhone, I can instantly get light when I need it. And then I'll show you what the triple tap is like. So I'll choose maybe control center for this one. And if I tap, 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 it's gonna open up Control Center on my iPhone. And as you can see here, we have a bunch of different shortcuts that we can choose from for back tap on the iPhone. A lot of people, this is their favorite iPhone feature of all time. So let me know in the comments what shortcut you have set up for back tap. 
The next setting is pretty simple. It is inside of battery and then simply make sure that battery percentage is turned on. If you don't have this turned on, you're not able to see what your battery life is at. You have to go into control center to see that. But if you have battery percentage turned on, you're always gonna be able to see the charge state of your iPhone in the corner. Next up is inside of display and brightness and make sure that automatic is turned on for dark mode. I always have it set so as soon as the sun goes down, it's gonna go into dark mode. This makes it a lot easier. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to go into control center to turn it on. Whenever the sun goes down, my phone instantly goes into dark mode. So this is really nice. If you don't wanna have it turn on when the sun goes down, you can also choose a custom schedule as well. You can choose exactly what time you want light and dark mode to turn on. But for me, I always like to use sunset to sunrise. And the next thing inside of display and brightness is called night shift. If you click on night shift, you can turn on scheduled. Now, again, I always recommend using it for sunset to sunrise. And this is going to give your iPhone display an orange tint at nighttime. Because apparently looking at a lot of blue light emitting from your phone is not good for helping you sleep. So if you have night shift turned on, you can make your iPhone a bit more warm, which apparently based on research is gonna help you sleep a bit better. Next up is for those of you who are going to be using Apple Music. There is a toggle inside of Apple Music that I really don't know why it's off by default, and that is automatic downloads. So in Apple Music, whenever you add something to your library, it's not going to download that song automatically. Instead, you're gonna to have to click on the menu and then click on download. But if you go into settings, scroll down, and then click on music, and then make sure that automatic downloads is turned on right here. This way, whenever you add a song to your library, it's automatically gonna download that song and it's gonna be stored on your iPhone. So you can tell it's downloaded by this little arrow right here on the right hand side. And this feature has saved me so many times. I remember I was on an airplane and because I had automatic downloads turned on, before I got on the plane, every song I added was instantly getting downloaded to my phone so I could play all of my music without needing to stream it. And then the final thing I wanna show you that you should change on your new iPhone is your control center. A lot of people leave their control center at their default settings, but you are missing out on a lot of features if you don't change this. So inside settings, if you click on control center, you can see all of the toggles and features that we have inside of here. And there might be some features that you didn't even know existed on your iPhone until you went into this menu. One of the ones I love using is Shazam Music Recognition. So if I click on this icon right here, it's gonna be listening for any music playing in my area. And it's gonna let me know if it detects a song. And then once it detects the song, I can then add it to my Apple Music Library right from Control Center. We also have some really cool toggles such as a code scanner. So if I click on this, you're able to scan a QR code right from Control Center. We also have a really great one for alarms. So if I click on this, I'm able to set an alarm right from Control Center. And you can poke around inside of settings and you can choose any of these toggles you want. You can add as many of these also, so you can load up your Control Center and you can have all of these toggles filled with features on your iPhone. So I'd recommend playing with this and finding some really great hidden features on your iPhone. So that's gonna do it. Congrats on your new iPhone. Let us know in the comments which new iPhone you got this year. And also, if you want even more Apple content like this, make sure to hit subscribe and turn on notifications for our channel as well. If you guys enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.